four four deuce is just like you know a Christmas flop for Linus. He you know he doesn't really hit this board, but he's just got so many big over pairs that True Teller doesn't have. We've got this new suspect in the game. We've got Barry Sweet, who is arguably the best PLO heads up player in the world, but he's been playing some no limit recently. And I haven't played him myself, but uh, you know, he's a, he's a competent player for sure. So I'm honestly not sure who's be better in this game. I would guess True Teller is a little bit better. Uh, he definitely was at first, but Barry's probably been in the lab. So, you know, the more they play, the more it works in Barry's favor, right? And they've been playing heads up PLO as well, in which Barry should clearly be winning. And then they play mixed games in which True Teller should likely be winning. So I don't know who has the edge, but it's fun to watch, right? So Barry makes it 960, fun sizing. True Teller three bits to 10. You see True Teller always making it different sizes. So that's fun to see. And Barry calls. 9-5 deuce is a, a favorable flop for Barry. He he has every set in his range. He has a lot of pairs, a lot of draws, a lot of overcards. But True Teller does have more hands like queens and kings, right? <clears throat> Check by True Teller, which I definitely like on this board so deep, at least sometimes. And Barry bets half pot, okay? True Teller check raises quite large here, which is fine. You know, just trying to punish the fact that Barry doesn't have too many over pairs and not allowing him to value bet too thinly. The four is a somewhat relevant card. Like, they don't directly improve on this card too much, but it does give them both more equity. True Teller makes it 30k roughly, trying to make the pot 100k on the river and shove, uh, shove the remaining 80. But there's going to be a lot of tricky cards on the river. Barry calls, and the river flush gets there, which is very much relevant. Both guys can easily have a flush. Um, two pair, not so much. Like maybe nine, like maybe Barry has nine seven suited. Maybe Barry ha or True Teller has five four suited. Uh, but eight six, I mean, unless unless Barry has like eight six of hearts specifically, I don't think it matters too much. But, you know, an a side flush is easily possible, as well as many other flushes. So let's see if True Teller bets at all. Maybe he bets really small. Maybe he goes all in. And True Teller bets 23k into 100, leaving himself 58 behind. Um, so, you know, so he's basically saying, like, I might have an overpair. I might have something like two pair. But again, that's unrealistic. So I'm not quite sure what he has. He's representing a hand like Kings plus Diamond, for instance. Barry's like, fuck your kings plus diamonds. I'm just going to go all in. Maybe True Teller even has something like, you know, pocket fives. He could have something like ace three. So many different hands he could have. Barry goes all in, representing basically a flush or a straight. And True Teller feels like he can't fold. Okay. Ooh. Oh, pocket fives. Okay, nice. 262k pot. Pretty sick. So Barry calls pre-flop with the jack four, which is loose but all right. Uh, he stabs a flop, which is like, okay, he has to be a bit careful, right? Because he only has a jack high flush draw. So, I mean, playing 130K each, you don't want to get it in flush over flush. So Barry has to be careful stabbing the flop, but he can call the check raise. And on the turn, he's thinking, well, I've got a pair. I beat True Tell's flush draws now. I have outs to the four of the jack as well as the flush. And on the river versus a small bet, it's an easy shove, right? Even if True Teller sometimes traps. You know, True Teller can be trapping. We saw it in the Queen Ten of Spades hand, how, how he trapped. And True Teller thinks, well, I can't fold this hand. I can still fold bluffs. I can still fold hands like Kings plus Diamond. Uh, you know, I think Barry is good enough to, uh, to find bluffs here. And Barry is the type of guy to, uh, you know, put some money in the pot happily. He, he likes the gamble for sure. And I don't think the stakes really deter him too much. So, yeah, nice hands. I'll give Barry a 7 out of 10, and I'll give True Teller a 7 out of 10 as well. True Teller makes it 900 again, and Linus makes it 10 big blinds. So it seems like a good sizing. Queen, Jack, 7 is a good board for Linus because they'll have all the sets and, you know, two pairs, you know, some two pairs and stuff like that. He's definitely ahead on this board. 
<clears throat> and he goes for a very small bet. True Teller calls, and his range is quite wide now. 10 is really good for Linus, but also pretty good for True Teller. True Teller can have king 9, 8, 9, 2 pair, whatever, pair plus draw. But Linus obviously has the ace king advantage, right? So he goes for a two thirds pot bet, which seems good too, saying, you know, I don't necessarily need the nuts to bet, but my range is quite polarized. And True Teller calls. So he's representing a pretty strong range as well at this point, because he is afraid of the ace king a little. More than a little, I would say. And on the river, you know, maybe, maybe Linus wants to introduce a small sizing, but all in is definitely, he's definitely going to go all in at a high frequency here. This run out is pretty clean for him. He shoves for a little bit over pot and True Teller calls. King three suited and queen five suited. Wow, sick. <clears throat> so what about Linus's play? The pre-flop three bet doesn't happen a whole lot, right? I mean, king three is just such a beautiful calling hand, but sometimes three betting makes sense. Um, flop, well, this end is really bad to bet with. So when he bets here, that tells me he likely bets, you know, full range or maybe close to it. And on the turn, he's thinking, well, I block ace king. It's really difficult for me to have nothing, right? Because a lot of my king x have a pair, so they won't necessarily have to bluff. So it's a really good bluffing hand. And on the river, he's like, well, I have no hearts in my hand. I block ace king. Um, you know, I'm at the bottom of my range. Good run out for me. I got a shove. And Truto called the three bet pre-flop, which is good. Calling flop is good. Calling turn with the additional equity is good. And on the river, let's go back to it. You know, it's kind of close. Because you need a creative player to come up with enough bluffs, right? Like king three, for instance. Low flush draws and some other hands. But Linus is, you know, the best heads up right now, according to a lot of people, at least in No Limit. So, you know, True Teller thought that Linus was creative enough to find some uh, some lower equity bluffs. So I'll give Linus an 8.5 out of 10, and I'll give True Teller an... Uh, I'll give him uh, an 8 out of 10. It's a, it's a loose call in the river, but, you know... It, there's a very, uh, there was a very aggressive dynamic in this uh, in this match for sure. I railed it live. OTB goes for the hipster sizing, 884. 11 big blinds this time by True Teller. And OTB calls, otherwise it would be a boring hand. Ace 9 6 is a pretty good board for both of them. It's a little bit better for True Teller, but. It's a, it's a good board for, for OTB as well. OTB should have hands like ace-9, ace-6, maybe 9-6, nine, 9-6s, six, nine, right? True Teller makes it 2,600 to go. And OTB ain't folding. The queen is a is a, ni a nice card for True Teller, right? He probably has pocket queens every time here, assuming he bets the flop with pocket queens, but OTB would always 4-bet. OTB might 4-bet hands like ace-queen sometimes, and True Teller has ace-queen here a lot. So good hand for True Teller. A good, good range advantage here. He also just turns a lot of draws, like Jack-10, for instance. So he goes for the big bet, which I definitely like. He's bet betting a polarized range now. No more small betting, like on the flop. And OTB calls again. Around two-thirds pot left. The four doesn't really change anything, unless OTB has ace-4 suited. Or maybe like, you know, queen-4 of diamonds, let's say. But that's not much of a concern. If, if True Teller had a hand like Ace King, he's happily value shoving. He shoves. Whether or not it's for value, we don't know yet. OTB is not folding. And True Teller has 7 8 offsuit, and OTB has Ace 8 suited. So the 7 8 3 bet is questionable, right? It's something you would do at a low frequency because, I mean, your hand is just not very good. And OTB calls ace 8, which is very standard. He could maybe 4-bet at a low frequency as well. And he decides to just call down the bet bet shove. You know, having an 8 is not fantastic, right? Because, you know, you you beat hands like 10-8, eight, 8-7, eight, let's say. So having an 8 is not fantastic, but OTB thinks enough missed and True Teller has enough bluffs in order to call here. And True Teller shoves here thinking, well, maybe OTB has like a flush draw, he folds. He can still fold an ace. Um... Uh, he, he might fold an ace. He might fold some other hands like nine exit diamonds or whatever. So I think True Teller should definitely shove this river. 
So in the end, I'll give OTB an 8.5 out of 10, and I'll give True Teller uh, an 8 out of 10. You know, the preflop 3 bet is very questionable, but bet, bet, betting is a nice line for sure. You know, a lot of stuff missed, but you still got to shove sometimes, right? You have a pretty wide value range here. So nice end of both. Let's pick this end. They're both about 67K deep, so it's going to be a big pot potentially. Let's find out. Hips are sizing once again by Linus. Just getting that extra little bit out of True Teller. Huge 3-bet by him. That's kind of strange. We've seen some big 3-bets, right? We saw 5,700 5, once, but not 6,400. Linus makes it 13.8. And True Teller calls. 4-4 four, four deuce is just like, you know, a Christmas flop for Linus. He, you know, he doesn't really hit this board, but he's just got so many big overpairs that True Teller doesn't have. And True Teller, I mean, he can have maybe four or five suited or something like that. Maybe it's four suited. Um, but yeah, he doesn't really hit this board. So Linus can just be super aggressive here, starting with a small bet. Yeah, I really like it. Wow, True Teller just ships it in. It's kind of awkward, right? Like, check raising is a bit awkward. You're not that, you know, you're not that deep. But, like, check raising all in is also a bit awkward because it's a bit much. So, that, that's in Linus's favor here. Linus calls. So, I'm guessing he has a, an overpair, maybe a flush draw, like, you know, like ace, king of clubs sometimes. Six is not that relevant. Queen is somewhat relevant. And seven and ace. <laughs> okay, so Linus has ace king, so I love the four bet, obviously. Um, on the flop, it's kind of close, right? I mean, he doesn't block flush draws, he doesn't block other draws. And if True Teller has in like pocket nines, let's say, or pocket tens, or pocket jacks, he's got, you know, he's got around 25% equity. And if he's up against like a draw, then he, I mean, depends on the draw, but uh, you know, he's usually around flipping. And True Teller has ace five offsuit. Um, you can three bet this hand at low frequency, just like the eight seven, but you just can't just like keep three betting bad hands and say, well, low frequency, right? You can't just hit the RNG, it hits 15 out of 100 and say, oh, well, that's close enough to 100, I just bluff always, or I three bet a bad hand. That's not how it works. So at a low frequency, you can three bet. Um, calling the four bet though, I mean, this is uh, a very significant mistake, in my opinion. Let's go back. So, True Teller, four bets huge. Uh, three bets huge. True Teller, three bets huge. I don't know if that was because of dynamics or stack size or because of his specific hand. Could have been a combination of all of those factors. Um, but you tried, right? You didn't want to pay the extra $4. You just three bet the end the, to end the hand right now. It didn't work. It's time to fold. It's just time to fold. Maybe ace five suited you can call, right? You can check shove and not flush draw a lot. But it's just a fold. I'm sorry. Especially out of position, right? Um, and on the flop, actually don't hate this shove. If Linus folds ace king, that's a big victory. Or if he folds a hand like ace 10 off suit. Um, if Linus folds a random other bluff, like whatever, queen seven suited, that's a big victory too. And then you have a gut shot, which is always live, and your ace is, you know, sometimes live, and then your back row flush draw is generally live as well. So I don't hate the check shove on the flop. There's a lot of money out there already, but I hate the call against the four bet, right? Because like now you're just like, yeah, I might as well ship it in. I flop something. Well, but you're not going to flop something very often with this hand. So yeah, that was a bit of a punt. Uh, Linus' decision is very close, but if he thinks True Teller has hands like these, uh, then, well, the call is not printing money, but it's definitely winning. So, yeah. True Tyler lost a big one here, and he shouldn't have. So, I'll give Linus an 8 out of 10. I like the 4-bet sizing. I like the C-bet sizing on the flop. Calling is close, and he looks like a genius because he was right. He could have just been up against a better hand, right? Uh, it's close either way. Calling there will not make you rich, although... 135k is a lot of money. Uh, True Teller's play, I mean, the shove is the shove is fine. I don't mind it. A smaller check raise would also not be bad. If anything, this hand would get shoved more often, right? Uh, but calling a 4-bet to nearly 14k out of position with ace-5 offsuit is generally not a recipe for success. So Linus, 
you know, eight out of 10, Truth Teller, I'll give a, a three out of 10.